Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in Brunei. I'm Carl and today we're going to be looking at the sidewall 3D printed vent. In front of me you can see that we've got the version, it's actually the version 4 sidewall vent and we're going to create a new version from this photo that Simone from Italy sent me. And you can see that in the real close up view here that they are at like a 45 degree angle and the, the veins are much further apart. We're going to see if we can reproduce that infusion and if you're interested you can follow along. Now because this is an original part, it's the correct size, it's just not the correct shape, what we need to do is take it down to a more basic form. And first of all I'm going to remove the fillets by selecting them at the base here and selecting delete. Good, that sends that into a more basic shape. I'm going to remove these fillets on the outside edge as well because they're too big compared to the picture. We need to reduce the size of them. They were a 10 millimeter fillet. I think we're going to take it down to about a three millimeter. I'm also going to remove the holes because if we bring the picture back, you can see that the screws aren't in the middle. They're actually towards the edge. I'll take that out to one side and remove the final fillet. What I'm doing is selecting it and then pushing delete key. Same with the holes, I'm selecting and pushing the delete key. Now we need to remove the veins inside, get rid of all them. And because they're not individual items, we're going to use the split body key, select it, and then I'm going to select this wall here. That's split them. This wall here. And we should find them now in the bodies list and there they are not that one let me hide that one so I know which ones we don't need to delete and what I'm doing here is I'm just selecting them and right clicking remove not delete because that has funny consequences yeah that's what happens when you go to delete so you can see that we've still got this vein attached on the last part we're going to select body to split and then hopefully select this plane here and it fails okay this time I'm going to push the L for line on the side face I'm going to draw a line directly across it auto locks I'm going to push the E key select the profile and delete it that way done split body should have worked but I don't know why it didn't Combine, dink, 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 and dink. So we combine them to join them all back up together. That's fine. Okay, next stage. If we bring the photo back in, we can see that it's actually quite deep in there. So I'm going to select this profile at the back here, push the E key, and extend it by 30 millimeters. Nice and deep, good. Let's bring that photo back in, and we can see that it's got a. It doesn't start. It's got a 45 degree slant on this wall here, and it starts about five millimeters in. So on this wall here, I'm going to push half a rectangle, and I'm going to draw down. It should lock to full length, which it does, and then I'm going to tab and put six millimeters in. Select the other part, I'm going to push the E key, and I'm just going to bring it out by 0.001. So we physically can't see it, but the computer knows that that's a different face. The reason why I've done that is if I push, if I left select the, if I left select the, uh, the face now, that looks good. I'm going to push the M key for move it, and we're going to rotate the face about that line. I'm going to drag it out by 45 degrees. And that gives us the start of the vent. Of course, we now need to put a fillet on these corners here. And we'll go with five millimeters. That looks good. Fill it again, forward face, and we'll do three millimeters there. Yes, that looks like the picture, I think. Let me grab the picture up. Bring the photo back in. That looks pretty good. 
got a nice small radius here, slightly more larger radius is on the corners there. We've got the 45 degree coming in there. Okay. I think what we need now is some veins. So we're going to select the forward face. We're going to push the L key for line. And then we're just going to draw a nice big long line at around 45 degrees. In fact, what we can do is press the tab and type in 45 degrees and hit enter. Drag it into what we think is the correct position. Let me pull the photo up. Yeah, about there looks good. I'm going to push the offset key to draw another line. And they look about three millimeters wide, the veins. Back to line key just to enclose the profile off so we can select that profile like so. I'm going to push the E key. And we're going to drag that out further than the back, like so. That's a bit too much, 70, yeah, that's good. And we're not going to cut, we're going to select new component. Okay, if we go back to the photo, we can see that they've got a rounded edge. So I'll push F for fillet. And then we'll put 1.5 because it's a 3mm thick part, which gives us a nice rounded edge. And you can see now that this fillet here interferes with this fillet here, which is not how the picture shows. They actually step back from the fillet. So we're going to select the component. We're going to push move. And we're just going to drag it back so it's off the edge. Five is too far. Let's try three millimeters. That's perfect. And you can see that our two fillets now do not interfere, but they are next to each other. I'm going to capture the position. And that looks good. All we need to do now, again, is select the component, move it, and we're going to rotate it about this forward axis here, and they are about 45 degrees. Let's try 40. Yeah, 40 looks good. Catch a position. That looks good. Right, I've gone into the component here, which is our vein. I want to select the body, not the component, because we're going to copy this now. And we're going to create a pattern, rectangular pattern. I'm going to want them to extend down in this direction here. I'm going to drag the last one. So it's got like the same size area as the, f the first. Let's have a look. Probably a bit too far. Yep, that looks good. And we need six of them. And it should auto fit them in. It has. I'm going to push OK. We're going to use my favorite tool again, which is the split body, and we're going to select all these. The split tool is going to be this unit here. OK. So now we've split the bodies that way. We need to split them at the back because they're still one piece. So back to split body. Select the six veins again. And this time the splitting tool is going to be the back face, which will create new parts. Now this bit's a little laborious, is I need to select and find and remove each one. So we've got our veins, that's all that's remained. And now we need to combine it all together. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to select all these bodies here. Join, let's see what happens. We can delete this component because it no longer exists. And then we've got our 3D printed vent, which is there. So now let's tidy it up. Of course, we need to put the fillets on the external edges. So I'm pushing the F key, selecting the four corners. And if I just quickly go back to the picture, it looks by about three millimeter three or four millimeters for the radius not the 10 that i originally had entered three yeah that looks pretty good okay let's do an offset and uh, we're going to offset this external edge by about minus six cool most of the the items i attach on the sidewall are used with four millimeter screws so we're going to put a 4.3, which gives us plenty of room to 
have a bit of misalignment, 4.3. And I'm pushing the circle key for these guys. E key to cut. So I'm going to just select the four profiles of the holes. And then drag them through. That hits OK. That looks good. And for the final touch, we're going to put a fillet on the outside edge of one millimeter just to round it off, make it look a bit more professional. And I think that's the front done. I quite like the way that looks. Just click on the A for appearance. And what have we got? We've got dark gray, which I think it already is. It is. There we go. So let's tidy up the back. And what I don't like about the back is, it, well, one, it's ugly. It's too square. And if we were to print this, we've got this 45 degree area here, this block, that is just solid waste. So I think what we'll do is we'll push the rectangle again onto this face. We'll select that face. And this time we'll go eight millimeters. And no, we won't. Control Z, escape that, drag it back down. Let it lock in, let's select the wrong one. And it's that one there that will select eight millimeters. Again, we're gonna select the other face. We're gonna drag it back by 0 0.001. So it thinks it's a different face. Now we can't see that on I, but the computer knows now that that's a slightly different face, which means we can select it by pushing the M key. We can rotate it and the axis we can select there. And we can drag this out to 45 degrees. Hit okay. And that gets rid of all that excess wasted print there. Now let's see if we can make the back look a little bit prettier. So we've got rid of all that excess PLA printing part there. Uh, I've got the F fillet key command up, so let's try these edges here. Nice three perhaps, yep. Uh, this time I'm just going to drag that down to the surface here. Click OK. Yeah, that looks good. And of course round here, Let's select these for a three millimeter fillet as well. Uh, the base one, let's put that in as a two. Yeah, that looks good. Don't like this sharp edge here, so let's see if we can get a fillet in there. Five perhaps, nope, three, yeah. And finally, will it let us put a fillet on this final bit up here? A nice one. That's good. Okay. And there we have our vent. It just looks a bit neater with a few fillets added to it. A little bit prettier. Okay. It also makes it a lot easier to slide in if you've got rounded edges. Let's put our screws back on. So you can see how far out our screws have been moved. I'm going to select all four of them. Move them. And just going to drag them out so they're easier to select. There we go. Hit OK. Select the first one, which is that one there. Push the M key. This time we're going point to point. So there's the lower surface. And we're going to select the upper surface of the vent. Catch a position because it's going to stay there. Same for this one. Left click on it. Left click again. M key. Point to point. Two done, catch a position. I think that's this unit ready for print. So, left click it, right click it, find in browser, it'll take us to the body, not the component. If we were to select the component, it would also select the screws, which is no good. Not unless you wanted to print plastic screws, of course, or even fake screw heads, that'd be all right. However, we want the body, so left click, right click, find in browser, it automatically selects the vent there. Right click again to open up the submenu, and we click Save as SDL. I want to send it to the 3D print utility for me, which is Cura, hit OK. Now this is going to load into Cura, and I already know that in my mind I want the 
this this surface to be up so it prints out really nice we don't want all the support structure stuck to the forward face where we're going to see it we want it stuck to the back side so it may take slightly longer to print because it needs a lot more support but it'll look better in the long run less uh, finessing after you've printed it okay so it's came in it's coming to cura like that not how i would want to print it no definitely not i'm going to select it by left clicking and the camera's in the way here we go uh, select that face there cool and then make sure we've got the quality yep slice 25 percent infill which is good 19 hour 20 hour print so it's basically a day hit preview I just want to make sure that there are no supports in between the veins, which there's not, which is good. It's only supports on the outside edge, as we can see we go down, and that's what will take the time to print. However, as you can see, I use a very low infill for the support density, and it's concentric. So it's absolutely minimum, and it's wafer thin. It's normally quite easy to get off as well. Let me go and shove this on the printer and I'll get back to you when it's done. It's actually the next day now and it's fully printed. Well, that came away nice and easy. You can see the support on the back there. Let's just see if it's gonna come away nice and cleanly. So it's a bit tight on the corners. And that has come out really nice. Got a bit of a cling on there. Let's see if I can just scrape that off. Yep, that's gone. That's gone. Here's the part we created on Fusion. It's printed overnight. Now, all we've got to do is mirror it because it is sided left and right. Let's get back onto Fusion, mirror the part and sort it ready for download. Now we need to drag these screws into that part so it makes a complete component and then we're going to select the whole component we're going to go up to create mirror on the mirror plane I'm going to select this surface here which has duplicated it and click OK change this to right hand side so when I make the SDLs you guys will know which ones to download there we go and press M for move and just drag it out so we've got a bit of separation having them side by side like this will have it easy to render to create a picture for the website in a second so now if we head over to render more than happy with them see so we get a bit of separation in there yep hit render I'm gonna go to local render and I want four by three, that's fine. Advanced settings, get the render as good as possible and hit render. Wait a couple of minutes for that to complete. There we go, that's nice and quick. So now you can clearly see the difference between the old version, this is version four here, version five left and right, and it just looks a lot better. Certainly looks like the picture that was sent to me. I now need to save the STL files for you so I'm going to left click, right click, find in browser, that's going to highlight it. We don't want this one because that will include the screws. So we want the subcomponent. I'm going to right click, save as STL. This time, because I'm going to put this on the website, I'm going to deselect send to 3D print utility and then save it as the vent itself. And this being the left hand side vent. 
version 5. Save. Same again for the right hand side. Find in browser. It's going to take me straight to it. I'm going to label that one up as the right hand side. Get rid of the numbers. Right click, save as SDL. Right hand side. Done. Now they're ready to go on the website for you guys to download if you need them. There should be a direct one for one replacement. The screw holes will be slightly out due to it being more authentic to the real design. As you can see, we've, we've pushed them out to the corners like the picture showed and they're not in the middle like my previous design. In this episode, you can see how we went and redesigned the 3D printed vent. Fusion actually is very easy once you get to know how to use it. Of course, it's all about experience and time on the device. I have spent many hours learning just like this, hour after hour, trying to get this right. I'll go and stick these on the website for you guys now. I'll catch you in the next episode, which will be the starter switch or the part two of the throttle build, which are both now complete and printed behind me. Catch you later, guys. Sim out from Brunei.